What's good, everybody? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode here on the King Ghana YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell. I really appreciate you for coming to the King Ghana channel. And today, again, we have our brother, the Aphrodamus Report. I'm gonna let him explain what his channel is all about. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, my channel is about, um, you know, bringing uh, the perspective from uh, the Western world here in America, you know, cause living here and living amongst black people in America and coming from an African nation, a tribe, a different culture. So I'm bringing those two perspectives to you. You know, I, basically I'm the inside man, you know, for the black side and the African side. So if you want to know more about that, subscribe to the Afridamus report you know don't go with your feelings trust me you if you are open to hearing you know different topics being discussed you would definitely get that in at the Afridamus report if you are looking to be challenged come to the Afridamus report thank you oh you're definitely definitely gonna be challenged it's like i said man you're one of my uh there's a few guys i like listening to uh, you know, like Pan-Africanism strikes back, you know, he has some different <laughs> opinions, but uh, you have some real, um, you could even call it pervasive. Some people will call it like, like, you know, if you were in a certain country, you might even be banned for you know, the way that you think, because it's very oblique, you know, it's a very orthodox view of things that some people would even probably consider mildly dangerous. But one thing that I like about you is that it's real and it's um uh it's articulate and the positions are very strong and you stand on those positions with how you feel or not even how you feel a lot of times i believe um it's something that you can prove uh, yeah, for it's what, not feelings you it, it, well you, you look at it right you've been mm -hmm. to africa i can assure yes. you man um you know um most africans you know even let's say black around because when i say they're like oh you say black people are lazy okay prove me wrong because a country where people work compare african countries to other places where people actually work look i've lived in africa you know mm -hmm. two different african countries as a kid you, you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. do you know how hard it is to get people to come to work you oh even if they're working how incompetent they are the stealing, mm -hmm. they can take your money and disappear. Mm -hmm. That's a common thing. Mm -hmm. That is this, that is a common thing. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so when I say these things, I can prove it. All you okay. have to do is just look at, look at the place. Okay. That's all you have to do. Because okay. I, I know, I know what real work does for someone. Mm -hmm. I know that. Because you see, like you, you bring even Africans that are willing to work and put in the time. You bring them to Western world like America or Europe. Just look at how how well we do. Just mm -hmm. think about that. Mm -hmm. People see it all the time. So how come it's possible for us to do that when mm -hmm. we are away from that environment? But when mm -hmm. we are there, we can't. We cannot do it. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. I mean, I'm the same individual. Right right mm -hmm. i'm the same individual what's the obstacle there mm -hmm. but you see for you to succeed you have to, you have to find a team of competent mm -hmm. people to work with mm -hmm. it doesn't matter you could be the smartest guy you could have the great for instance i'll give you an example you can mm -hmm. have the greatest brand new ship you can be the you know but if your captain is a shitty captain does he know his or her way you would just be going in circles. You got the mm -hmm. best ship in the world, mm -hmm. but you, you know, yeah, but you you have no direction. You don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. So African countries are like that most of the okay. time. They okay. have they have what it takes. You know, all the necessary condition is there, right? But mm -hmm. how come they are just going in circles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It. Is it is it the place or the people? Mm -hmm. Let me, and that's going to lead into today's topic because, you know, I do listen to uh, your live streams. And again, 
I will call you Aphrodamus, the long-winded report, because <laughs> you like to talk, brother. You, yeah. uh, that's one thing about black people. They like to talk. They like the, the pontification report. Brothers love to talk. <laughs> You know, love I like. Talk. I should have thought. Of, maybe I'm, I might have to get some, another channel and call it the pontification chat report. But you love to talk a lot. I'm like this brother streams four hours, and it would just be you. You know, you just three hours, four hours. You you have a lot to say. Right. And um and and a lot of times, and you you and other people, but you when you 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 say, I, I pick up a lot of different things. And one of the things you did because you've been living in the United States for over twenty years, you you have a pretty good idea. You, you, you're an expert in understanding how Africans think, right. but you also understand how African Americans think to a certain right. degree now. So, right. and you 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 made a comparison, and what you were talking about, I, I kind of caught the mid middle of the um, of the comparison or, or uh, the comparing and contrasting rather of um, African Americans and and Africans in Africa, and what you. Um, you, you, you compared it to a lion that is kept into a, a, a zoo and uh, a lion that is in the wild undomesticated, which was the Africans, and the undomesticated. Now, I want to talk about that. Like, how did you come up with that? And what, what were you trying to make clear in that particular uh, comparison? Okay, so I'm glad you asked me that. See, like I said, I'm someone that I, lo- I like observing things. I pay attention to how humans interact with each other, how people think. And if you look at it, um, I, I, I like going I like going to the zoo or I like watching you know um, the you know um, animals, you know the different animals on on, the, on on television. But if you look at the way you know like black Americans are socialized here, you know, they are compared to Africans, they are domesticated Africans because they are constant, you know, they are raised not by the, by their own. They are raised by different people because when you go to schools, right? For instance, the reason why I came up with it, I'm able to see it. You go like in the schools, the people that teach, you know, black children most of the time, are not black people themselves right the, the television programs the shows you know that they bombard them with it's it's not written by african-american people it's not them putting it on and most people their children are raised by that you know through tv so so an african for instance where i come from um when i was growing up you know it's 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 free range you 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 are on your own. You're thinking on your own. The people you interact with is the people that are there. You see what I'm saying? From your own culture. My idea of school, for instance, going to school, is not to go look for a job. I'm just curious about what is in the books, like what white people are talking about. That's what I was curious about. You see, and and and. Yeah, this is why. Okay, for instance, Oshie, you, you've been to Africa. This is yes. why you would see an, you know, African. Most Africans, like they have nothing whatsoever, materially, but they are super confident. You compare that to most black people. When most black people in America, if they don't have money or or stuff, they don't have confidence. Mm-hmm. They don't have confidence. Mm-hmm. You see. Mm-hmm. So, so, so you, you, when you tell a black person, you remind them of their skin color. Oh, look at how black you are. Mm-hmm. They really, really take it to heart. If mm-hmm. you call them uh, a monkey or, you know, words, that's because they've been domesticated, you know? Like a, you take a lion, you, the, you, the same lion, you take it mm-hmm. from Africa. You bring it here in the zoo. Mm-hmm. The parent, that parent lion still has that, you know, that freedom, because freedom is is in your mind. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter being put in the enclosure. But the children that are born in that zoo, in that enclosure, it becomes normal to them. They don't know, they don't know what freedom is like, like being in the savannah free, running around, 
doing mm -hmm. what you want, you know, mm -hmm. fighting with hyenas. You know, this <laughs> lion in the zoo, right? Right. For this lion to eat, mm -hmm. humans have to feed this lion. They mm -hmm. feed this lion. But mm -hmm. the African lion have to hunt for what mm -hmm. they eat. So that's mm -hmm. the difference. Like in Africa, mm -hmm. for instance, there is, okay, where I'm from, there's no, um, like, let's say, uh, welfare or, or thinking about government. None of that. The government is just there. It's just there just for the sake of it. But Africa, you are entirely reliant on yourself. Just you. You have to fend for yourself. You have to do these things on your own. There is the cavalry is not coming, and you know this. But in America, when you have a domesticated mind, you're looking for the cavalry. So this is why you see, like, like people say, oh, oh, the Africans don't talk about their government. I'm like, what's there to talk about? They can't do anything for me. So there's nothing to talk about, you see? Because mm -hmm. I already know, hey, I'm not getting anything from these people. So it's, 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 you know, all about me, me doing for me, you know, in America, it's a completely different ball game. In fact, it is expected. People feel entitled, you know, the lion in the zoo expects to be fed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they expect to be fed. The lion in the savannah doesn't expect to be fed. They have to get it themselves. So that's where I, that's how I came up with that analogy. I know some they're gonna be hung up on. Oh, he compared us to animal. No, I'm not. I'm not saying you are literally the animal. It's mm -hmm. an anal. It's an analogy. So yeah, really good analogy. Um, one I would have never thought about. But let me ask you this: because you know your home country, and you were just um, you know you, you you work with a lot of. YouTubers in, in, the, in this burgeoning Pan-African space. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, you're working with. You just did the Happy Companion. My brother from California, he was on yesterday. It was a pretty good stream. Right. And you you, you, you do see uh, certain African-Americans that are trying to repatriate. Most notably, you hear Tanzania, Ghana. Mm -hmm. But uh, a really good um, place that people are going to is, yeah, there's Gambia. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's Black Sit. And then there's yeah. Bag Family. And so now in Tanzania, to, to, to talk about that, there are a lot of African-Americans who came to Tanzania simply because during last year, during COVID, during the first lockdown, the first strand, the first wave, there wasn't any coronavirus tests. So all of these African-Americans or black British, they came to Tanzania and then they started to leave rapidly. They couldn't stay there long term. Hmm. So... Now, let's put your analogy into perspective. Did we just see that the domesticated lion could not survive under those circumstances? Yes. It, can we use that same parable? Right, right. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. Because uh, okay. if you look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Man, people say Africa, Africa, they romanticize, romanticize it. So I'm glad you, you gave that. You know, when it is, you know, um, if there's is trouble hits like in Africa, it doesn't have to be a major thing. Westerners that are there, they cannot survive it. They have to leave. You cannot live without electricity. You know, like we've lived our lives with no electricity. And it's like, it's normal. When you say that to somebody, they are like, how do you guys, how are you able to manage that? Even though we didn't have the electricity, I, I guarantee you, I watch the same, I watch movies that, you know, people watched here. Um, you know, I have to, go, it's literally a hustle. I have to go find it. So, you know, when I find a place where I can watch that movie, oh man, I'm, I'm watching the movie till the end, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching even the credits and everything, you see? So that's the difference. And, and, and when people say they are in Africa, they're only there when it's cool. But mm -hmm. but when 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 truly the true Africa raises its head, you know, you they're gonna leave. They they won't be able they can't face it. Mm -hmm. yeah, what is, the, what is the true it. Africa? What is the true Africa? The true Africa is um 
complete opposite of here. Things, you know, not convenient. Things are not fast paced. Um, in, you know, like, uh, you have to lower your expectation or, you know, you shouldn't have any expectation to be quite, to be quite honest. That's what true Africa is. You have to be, it's a day to day thing. It's a day to day thing. And, you know, I know some are going to come and say, oh, that's not how my life is. Okay. That's great. But I'm speaking in generality, the majority. I'm speaking about the majority, you uh -huh. see? Uh -huh. And and also, the way things, especially in Gambia, the thing, the way things work also, it's more community. It's a uh -huh. bunch, you know, you, uh -huh. you know, like, the people you're related to uh -huh. are really, really like, I mean, there's no breaking there in your life. Mingling <laughs> in it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? People yes. can just show up. They can just show up at your place whenever. Right. You know, just to come eat or whatever. Um, uh, black people don't don't tolerate that in the West. Oh no! Oh yeah. no! You gotta call first. You gotta call first. You know, if you yeah. if you show up and you didn't call, they wouldn't let you in. But, <laughs> and, That's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, even I mean, like, trust me, I hang out with a lot. Of, I've, I, look, I hang out with a lot of black people. My ex-wife, she she was black. Okay, African American. And, African American, okay. and uh, I mean, we go to, I mean, I'm we go to barbecues. We and you know, like with black people, if you come into barbecue, you they always ask, "Hey man, uh, uh, you gotta bring your own food." It's like I'm like, okay, if I gotta bring my own food, I can just eat that at my own place, you know? Right. So, but with you know, um, Africans, the difference, you know, you can just show up. You can even bring your own to some people bring their bowl. So when after they finish eating and carry some home. Yes, that happens too in the African American community also. Yes. It, it, oh no. You know what? Let me rephrase that. Yeah. Uh I've met black people whom, you know, especially if they're from the South. Let me from the South. Yeah. They 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 act like Africans though. That part yeah. of them. Yeah, they act like Africans. Um that hospitality part they right. have that yes 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 I, thanks for reminding me of that this is mm -hmm. true i'm i'm speaking more of like the city blacks <laughs> you know, they... <laughs> so let me let me ask you let me ask you this because you know there's a, a lot of people that are um trying to get back into africa we see it because there's people I mean, there's a whole community, there's a whole content strategy. You're a YouTuber too. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a whole repat market now. Like, right. Right. Yes. Uh, well, you know, Eat Love Migrate. And I don't know who Batunda. that is. Eat Love Migrate. Um, oh. uh, King of Batunda. There's the, you know, there's a, a whole economy now. Um, you know, there's one lady that you did a video with, that's controversial video. Uh, with the lady that was an Exodus house, so that was a whole situation oh, yeah, with that, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. So, 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 so there's a whole thing, and, and a lot of people, you know, feel like, well, you know, Africa is calling me, um, the motherland is calling me, um, white supremacy in the West is this true strut. I'm tired of the white man holding me back and all this other stuff, and um, and then they want to move to Africa and it can be free. Um, you know, you being a, um, and I, I was talking to you before when I was coming up and I had some African friends, you know, in, in California. And when I would talk about going back to Africa, they would always say, but don't like, it was a good percentage of them saying like, Hey, I know you're interested, but you're wasting your time. Like, and they also have some of the, I wouldn't call it a pejorative sentiment, but I think that what you're trying to say is more realistic outcomes. Um, what advice would you give to people who have been you know, pampered in the West with, you know, you have jobs and then there's 401k and then there's, you know, you got Walmart and then there's Best Buy. And then you're going to Gambia where you can't get a MacBook, you know, and there's no such thing as uh, Kroger's or, you know, there's not Foot Locker and, and, and those are not th things that you're used to having and good customer service. What do you tell a person that wants to repatriate or, or move back to Africa eventually 
when they are and they and they've never owned the business and they've never had to go out there and hustle on a daily basis or their skills might not translate to what's there in Nagami or Uganda or Tanzania. What, what advice do you give somebody who has that interest? See, this is the thing. Um, a lot of people, especially in America, when when you talk to them, I've heard these people talking. Um, the problem is they cannot see outside the box. They cannot think outside of themselves. Um, they think, you know, the rest of the world, you know, is exactly like America. That's what they think, but it doesn't look like that. Because if you're going to these places, you must leave all the American expectations that you have. And I've been seeing, you know, majority seem like to be females and there's no building happening. Okay. These are single women. Most of them are old already. They, they said they're going there to build, to do business. They've never done business here in America. I mean, there's no way. Say it again. That's the good important part. Say that again. Yeah. They've never done what? They've never, they've never done business. Right. But they want to go to Africa because I hear people all of a sudden, you know, they they, they they're business experts. You right. know, oh, I'm gonna do this. Like, okay, oh, I have this skill. That's not needed in Africa. Like, how are you gonna, how are you gonna translate that there? You know, mm -hmm. some of these things they talk about. Um, <laughs> It requires stable electricity. Yes. No, you know, the electricity there is not stable. You need you need reliable people. You know, people that understand what is going on. Good luck finding that. If you find them, hey, hold on to them. But you're going to be searching for a while. Okay. And also, who are you going to be selling to? This is my question. Mm -hmm. who are you going to be selling to yes you're coming with your money you exchange it you know but it's gonna you, you're just gonna be spending it who are you going to be selling it to i've heard some people say oh i'm gonna open up a soul food soul food place but these people can't even cook if you want to if you want to prove prove that you could open a soul food place in africa you should open it here first and you know be, you should open it here because to open look oh shit, i'm a businessman i own my own company out here mm -hmm. okay i have eight employees you know in my company so i know that you cannot just get up and say oh i'm gonna start a business and be successful you know um even in america it's difficult you know, where all the conditions literally favors you, literally favors you. But these people still cannot pull that off here. Now you go to a place where the conditions are against you, the mm -hmm. language, language barrier, you know, um, lack of electricity, mm -hmm. the comforts that you're used to, your supplies. You know, technically, these countries are more expensive than people really you know really think mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. electron electronics are, are expensive there oh yeah oh yeah and what if your electronics even like maybe your apps that you need for businesses maybe they don't even translate there they mm -hmm. don't work mm -hmm. you know what about that so so if you're gonna go to africa truly to want to do business before you you decide anything Go look at what the Africans spend their money on first. That's what you have to look at. What do they spend the money on? And you go from there. But I can assure you, man, in the hustle and bustle of the African market, man, these people coming from the West being you know, pampered, there's no way they would survive that. Look at there was an old lady over there in Gambia. Mm -hmm. making video she thinks she's shaming the people about the chicken the frozen chicken saying oh the electricity goes out these chickens are thawed they put them back in like ma'am you went all the way to africa to buy frozen chicken there you should be shopping in the in the local market but they can't even they can't even go in the market 
and mingle with the people. How are you going to start a business? Mm -hmm. How are you going to start a business? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have to interact with the people. Mm -hmm. And and I'm telling you, oh, you're going to run into a lot of uh, shady Africans. I'm sure, O'Shea, you've run into some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my advice to them is, you know, be realistic, man. Mm -hmm. Be realistic. Don't fool yourself. Mm -hmm. um, business is tougher in Africa than America. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're a businessman over there. You, so you know, you know what I'm saying. You know, yes. if I, yeah, yeah, if I know, you know that I'm not lying. You need a lot of infrastructure. Yeah. Lack of infrastructure, you know, mm -hmm. potholes everywhere. You see? So, so, but one thing in Gambia, you could live comfortably if you, if you want, but you gotta have, you know, the money to live in certain areas even the people with the money you can have your money but there are things you cannot get you know that even a regular person here in america is getting every day so so they have to be ready for all that you know and and a lot of these people i'm watching listening to you know they're not ready for all that because they they want to base it on asking for donations you mm -hmm. cannot base your, your African trip to go live there on donations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to work. I mean, if you just want to go create content, hey, I think, you know, content creating is a big thing mm -hmm. there now, as we can see. Um, but but a, a lot of the people that are going, uh, like I said, single women, um, mm -hmm. And these are middle-aged women mm -hmm. who are already, you know, like washed up in America. Now, I guess Africa is the is the last leg, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Who knows? You know, more power to them. You know, mm -hmm. if they can, if they can survive it, good for them. But um, I, I I doubt it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I doubt it. The Africa that I know, and knowing black people here in america very few can survive it to be honest mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. few can survive it there mm -hmm. you know because even the sensibilities is different mm -hmm. you know um especially you know black people here talk about you know cpt black people have, yeah cpt oh, yeah. but but like there. for example if an african person if you want them to be on time I'll tell you right now. If you need them to be there at five o'clock, right? Just say seven. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell them seven o'clock, you know? Yeah. You know, so, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Well, brother, go ahead on and tell them about your channel, brother, before we close this out, family. Hey, I'm Afridamos of the Afridamos Report. Please uh, make sure you subscribe. Um, hey, my content is one of those contents where you're either, you know, with the facts or feelings. But either way, still subscribe. Even if you're a witch, you can still subscribe because you would see a whole lot of things that I do on my channel. You know, we perform exorcism. We have the Pan-Africanist uh, church choir music, you know, uh, <laughs> highlighting who... <laughs> Did you see the Pan-Africanist church choir? No, uh, I didn't uh, see that one. No? Oh, man. Did you see me perform exorcism there? No, I, but I'm going to check it out now. Yeah, I had to I had to perform an exorcism on an on a African witch that was attacking me. You know, so so I did that, and yeah, make sure you subscribe. Um, on on a re on 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 the real though, yeah. Um, don't go, you know. Don't just dismiss what I'm saying. Think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, think about everything that I'm saying. It's not mm -hmm. me being malicious or being funny or trying to trigger you whatsoever. If you mm -hmm. think what I'm saying. You know, um, I don't have any point. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, leave your comments. You know, challenge me. Sometimes okay. I open the line. You feel free to call in. You know, you know, no, no ratchet stuff though. You know, um, because I want to hear what you have to say, and so that you can hear me too. We can agree mm-hmm. to disagree, but at the end of the day, we still gonna love each other. Mm-hmm. That's what it is about love. Okay. That's why. That's yeah. why. I'm, that's why I'm. T- that's why I'm talking about these things is because I love people. Mm-hmm. You know, because people just sometimes people walk around. They go into this trance as if they don't see what is happening. Mm-hmm. You know, when I hear people talk about Africa a certain way, it blows my mind. I'm like. Do they even know what they are talking about? Mm-hmm. But I'm open to them going there f- to see for themselves. You've mm-hmm. gone and seen for yourself. Africa is one of those places. You can either you can either live there or not. You the African life is not for everyone. Right. Not it's even tough. Africans that are used to the West. Right. Not even them. So, yeah. I've seen Africans gone to Gambia. They say they're moving back. They return back to the United States. And they were born and raised there. Oh, my God. So, Okay, brother. Well, I definitely thank you guys. Check out the Afrodomus um, channel link. Uh, the first comment at the top. And as you know, keep it real. King Ghana forever. We are out.